Hello and welcome to another Blender Absolute Beginner tutorial. Every time I say that it's kind of a mouthful. Okay, so today what I wanted to talk about are two things in particular. Number one, I want to look, about, look over what the cycles render is compared to the Blender internal render. Just a little tiny bit of an intro to that, not going very deep at all. And the second thing I want to look at is a very simple animation. Um, I'm not going to dive into the technicalities of animation, but I'm going to get you set up on the basics so you kind of know how to make things move and even be able to render a video of a scene. So let's get started. First of all, i got to turn on my screencast so you guys can see what I'm pressing. And the first thing we want to do is, is just to set up our scene. So I'm going to delete this light first, and I'll tell you why in just a second uh, when I get into the, the specifics on the cycles render. Um, but first thing I want to do is I want to set up my scene. And my scene is going to consist of a plane that I'm going to scale to fit uh, about the size of that default grid. And then I'm going to add in this monkey because the monkey's cool. And it's essentially the mascot of Blender. So, no, I don't want to grab that. I want to rotate this just so it sits flat and then pull it up onto the plane sorry I'm just setting this up so really I'm just making this look nice um, ooh. getting a little carried away there so I'm gonna rotate along the x-axis nope. and I'm getting all my keys mixed up guys sorry this is probably painful to watch okay that's good enough then I'm just going to come over, make him look a little nicer with the subdivision surface. And I don't know, do two or three. Should be just fine. Make sure smooth shading's on. That way it'll look nice and sharp. And we can go ahead and apply that because we're not really going to be editing a lot of meshes today. Today is going to be more about rendering and animating. So, first thing is up here in the middle, you'll see this Blender Render option on the very top header in the middle of the screen. Blender Render. Click on that and you can pull down to different rendering options. Now there's a Blender game engine that I literally know nothing about, but there's also the Cycles Render. And Cycles Render is a much newer and much more true to life render engine. Blender Internal Render, as it's called, or Blender Render, is the older and pretty solid one it's full featured it can do pretty much anything but it doesn't do everything well and and i'm i'm saying this with some caution because i don't have a ton of experience in 3d modeling obviously but from what i've read up on um cycles render has much more realistic lighting and it has it has some very huge advantages as far as ease of workflow and as far as uh, well, the biggest one being lighting, it has more realistic lighting. And what I'm going to do, instead of tell you all the specifics about the engine, I want to, you guys, if you have time, to check out this other video. I'm going to post a link in the uh, description. It's not my video, but it was so helpful to me that I want to give them credit and uh, refer you to them. It's it's It can be a little slow paced at times. It can be a little fast paced at times. But overall, it's a great watch. Very very good and uh, I'm gonna put the link below and it's about 40 minutes long so it's a little bit longer but it's it's great and it goes over what cycles is so what I'm gonna do then is uh, the reason I deleted the light is because in cycles you don't necessarily use the point lights you use emissive surfaces and typically people will just add in a plane to be a surface that emits light. So I'm going to pull it, I'm going to add in a plane, and I'm going to move the plane kind of off to the side so we can get some angled lighting. Um, keep in mind where your camera is. And sorry, this is uh, not the most interesting thing to watch because I'm fumbling around with all my keys, but I'm going to pull it over here. I'm going to rotate it. like that and then over like that and then what I'm gonna do is make sure it's kinda lined up I think I'd like it more above the camera like that okay 
So then what we'll do is we'll come over to, on that object, we'll come over to its materials. And if you have Cycles Render selected, if Cycles is not an option, number one, make sure you're up to date on your Blender. Number two, go to File, User Preferences, and Add-ons, and you can type Cycles to filter it out. And make sure Cycles is checked and installed. Um, if, if that's good, you should have Cycles Render here. And with Cycles Render, you'll see the materials um, looks a little bit different than the internal render. Um, it's a little bit simpler and it's very simplified, but there's more to it than you than you initially think. And and they'll go over that in the video I'm gonna I'll post in the other tutorial. So what you want to do then is just to set up the scene, we're gonna have the the plane selected that's gonna be our light. And the surf okay, we're gonna I didn't do that right. New and we're gonna go to surface, we're gonna change surface to emission. There we go. We don't really need the preview. The surface is going to be a mission. The color is white. You can actually change it to be, be a little more warm, um, however you like. I like it just to be a little bit in the orange, a little rosy maybe. Um, and then the strength, we're going to crank it up to maybe 15, uh, maybe 18. I don't know. So you can play with that and see what looks best. Now, uh, the other thing we want to change just to make things look pretty is we're gonna right click to select uh, Suzanne the monkey we're gonna add a material for him and the surface we're gonna select one that looks nice is glossy and we're gonna change the roughness to maybe uh, 0.5 and what's, whatever pick your favorite color I think I'm gonna go for ooh, uh, like that pink Right on. All right, so just F12. Make sure everything looks okay. You'll also notice it's a bit different than uh, what you're used to as far as the other render goes. Uh, the details of which are the advantages of cycles. And sorry that I'm not going to go into those today. I just want to be able to set up a nice-looking scene, um, and then I'm going to dive right into animating it. Now. That's all we're going to talk about Cycles today, I promise. Cycles is is really powerful, like I said. Watch this other video. You'll get you caught up on what I know about Cycles. But this is all we need to set up our scene. So F12 is the quick render, if you remember. And uh, that looks nice. You know, simple, easy, sharp. Now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this. The way to animate is this uh, timeline window that we've always had down here and never used. What this is, is a series of frames, um, frames per second, as you as you could see in, in animation, and each frame um, is, will flip through them and animate them like a flip book or something. So what you want to do is you can set the start and end frames here. If you go to render, you can actually set, not in dimensions, in, oh, I just had this, where did this go? Maybe it is in dimensions. You, here it is, frame rate under dimensions. You can set the uh, the speed of the render. 24 frames per second is the default, so that means in one second it'll flip through 24 frames, and that is true to life. And you can set it however you want for whatever standard you prefer. I'm going to stick with the default 24 just for simplicity. And then what we want to do is we want to set. We're not going to set every single frame. That would be extremely tedious. Say we have, I don't know, say we have a 20 second long animation. For 20 seconds we would have to set over 400 frames, so that's like almost 500 frames actually. And that's way too many frames to be setting for such a short animation. So what we can do is set uh, what are called keyframes. And the way to set a keyframe is just to click record and then do something with the model. So I'm just going to hit grab and then click it again. So I grabbed it and didn't move it at all. But you'll notice the Suzanne down here is orange and you'll notice that if I move where I'm at there's this yellow line. That yellow line is a keyframe. What that means is if I set another keyframe, let's say at the 20 frame mark, let's say I grab it and actually move it this time. I'm going to move it straight up. And that sets another keyframe because I'm still recording. What that means then is that from the first keyframe 
all the way to the second keyframe, it'll interpolate the movement. So from here to here, what's the easiest way? Well, I'm just going to add all the, the subtle movement in between. And that makes it extremely easy to, to set this animation. You only have to set specific points where you want it to interpolate the difference. So with this still set, I'm going to just play around with the uh, animation and I'm going to rotate. Um, I was playing around with this earlier and it was kind of fun. I'm just going to make him look... Uh, I'm going to make him look down. If I can, maybe. Rotate Y. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, and then I'm going to pull another keyframe out here. And I'm just doing this arbitrarily. Um, if you know more about animation, there's probably better ways to do this. But really, I'm just arbitrarily setting some time between, and you can go with it and see how it feels. And then I'm going to drop him on his face. Boom. So I've got these four keyframes. First one, he's in the initial position. Second one, he's up. A third one, he looks down. And fourth one, he drops on his face. So then my last frame is 60. I don't have to show all these. I can set my end frame to 60. And then I can scroll on here to uh, zoom in. And then I can come over to, uh, I think it's frame. While I'm on this end frame, I can set end frame. And then I can just um, deselect record and then click play. And it'll cycle through and it'll just loop through all the animations. And there you have an animation. So since we have our lighting set up um, and our scenes already set up, we can preview this animation. Uh, I'm going to pause this. We can preview this animation Oops! by clicking the animation. And it may take a second, especially if your render settings are higher. But it'll go through and uh, do a lot of crazy stuff. So it's an easy way to set up your render. Um, you set up your keyframes. And then if you want to do some more advanced editing and changing around, what you can do is, instead of being on the timeline, you can go to the dope sheet. And then each of these vertical columns is a keyframe. And it has its different properties. And each yellow dot is a, a property in that column. And you can actually click on these. And you can grab them. I think it's, it's rendering at the moment, so it won't let me. But you can actually select these, grab them, and uh, move them around if you need to on the dope sheet. So... I'm happy with mine. I'm going to stick with the timeline. And you can see it's counting through. I'm on uh, frame 11 so far. I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me, but maybe I'll edit in the uh, final animation. Maybe not. I'll leave it as a surprise to you. You can run this animation render then, and you can change all the settings. You can have it speed up or slow down. You can stretch it out with the aspect ratio just like you would a normal picture. Um, it'll essentially just do picture by picture, frame by frame renders. So there you have it. That's a simple animation. Um, if you wanted to spin a wheel, let's say, you could just sit there and rotate between maybe two or three keyframes. Um, if you wanted to do some more complex animation, you may have to... My camera's not even capturing him up here. So I'm going to actually cancel this render. Um, yeah, so that's animation for you. Very simple. The other thing about cycles you can do is you can come to this um, method to display shade objects in 3D view. This is on the header of the 3D view window, the white circle, um, and change it to rendered. And it'll be, depending on the performance of your system, it'll be a little grainy. But uh, that's another way to preview it. And you'll see this plane up here is my light source. And you'll see my little pink glassy guy that I can pause at any time and the longer you let it sit on a frame the the more it'll render it so there you have it guys a little bit about cycles a little bit about keyframes and animation
Um, there are a few drawbacks to animating this way and some workarounds that I won't get into today. For example, you can't deform a specific mesh. You can only translate or rotate the object this way when setting keyframes. There are some workarounds to that, but it's more complex. And I think that's the biggest thing. Also, if you have an armature, if you have rigging, there are some other specific things you need to do to be able to animate it. So um, maybe more on that later, but for now, this should get you started with some simple animations. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week.